Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step how to value a stock. We will enter the company's financial information and capital structure into my Excel model. Then we determine whether the stock is a buy or a sell. At the end we calculate and analyze the financial ratios. I am doing this with you throughout the entire video so it's like we're doing it together. Leave a comment and I'll be sure to answer. The company we're going to do today is Kraft Heinz. And Kraft Heinz is the third largest food and beverage company in North America and fifth largest in the world. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $43.3 billion. That's the value of the company according to the stock market. And they're trading at $35.43, so that's one share of stock. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows and then discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. Now I'm pulling the actual free cash flow. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. Let's pull the net income. That's a profit and loss on the income statement. And then we're going to pull the revenue, which are the sales for each year. We also want to take a quick look at the numbers just to make sure they look okay. They had a big negative net income in 2018, but yet they had positive free cash flow. And everything else looks pretty good. Their sales have been decreasing pretty much, which isn't good. Let's look at a capital structure. They pay 1.4 billion of interest on their debt. Now we need to go to the balance sheet to see how much debt they have. We'll go to liability section current debt of one billion dollars that's debt due within 12 months long-term debt of 28 billion dollars that's debt due after 12 months interest payments are tax deductible so let's get their effective tax rate we'll go back to the income statement income before tax is 2.6 billion income taxes of 728 million so effective tax rate is 27%, cost of debt is 3.4%. Let's get the beta to figure out the cost of equity. The beta is how volatile the stock is. So the stock moves with the market. They have a beta of 1.03. We also need the current assets to calculate the current ratio later. And that's on the balance sheet. Current assets is $8 billion. And that's made up of two billion of cash, two billion of net receivables, 2.7 billion of inventory, and half a billion of other. We also need the current liabilities at 7.9 billion. Let's see what that is. One billion of current debt, four billion of accounts payable, one billion of accrued liabilities, and 1.8 billion of other. Stockholders' equity is the value of the company according to the balance sheet. That's 51 billion. That's assets minus liabilities. And that's 12 million of common stock, negative 3 billion of retained earnings. So this means they're operating at a loss historically in the past. And negative 1.9 billion of accumulated other comprehensive income. Let's go back to the income statement, get the operating income. That's $5 billion. That's how much money the company makes before paying interest and taxes. Let's look at a capital structure, 36% debt, cost of debt 3.4%, 64% equity, cost of equity 10.2%, the WAC is 7.75%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 33 billion. We discounted these numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $29 billion. We divide that by 1.2 billion shares. And we come up with a calculated stock price of $24. They're trading at $35. So it's trading at a 48% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street has them at. They're saying $47. So they're saying the company's a buy. So we're a bit different. Apparently their models are more conservative than mine. It looks like the stock price has been going down for a good year or so and then it's pretty flat the past six months. 
Looks like it could be a good value, but it's a kind of stock that won't move too much. Let's look at the financial ratios. A bad PE, a good price of sales, and a really good price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 22. So investors are paying $22 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue or shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 1.7. So investors are paying $1.70 for $1 revenue. So in 2019, they had 25 billion of revenue, which is a great number for the stock price. But they only converted 8% of that revenue to net income. So only 2 billion of net income, which is a really poor number for their stock price, which is indicative of the PE and price to sales ratios. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 0.8. So that means investors are paying 80 cents for $1 book value. Book value per share of 42 indicates that if the company went bankrupt, they would pay each shareholder $42. So the company is worth more in bankruptcy than active. They have an okay current ratio, a bad ROE, and a good interest coverage ratio. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can just cover their current liabilities. ROE is net income over equity, so they're providing a poor return to their equity holders. I like to see above 20%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2, there are 3.7, so they can easily cover their interest payments. And the best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Hormel, Kellogg's, and here's Kraft. And Kraft has the best PE of the companies. They're better than the average in price sales. They have the best price to book by far. In terms of current ratio, they're worse than the average, but at least they're above one. ROE, they're the worst at 4%. They're better than the average in debt at 36%. And they have the most in market cap at 43 billion. So let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment, I'll be sure to answer. Thanks for watching.